All right, welcome everyone. Today is going to be a little bit different, as you can tell. Um, this is a new setup for me. I've got my camera in front of me, I've got my microphone off to the side. Hopefully it's picking up my voice properly. But uh, yeah, today I'm going to be playing this uh, pen and paper puzzle book called Lock. Um, and it's not like a, it's not just like a collection of standard pen and paper puzzles. There's no Sudokus in here. This is like its own thing. Uh, and as far as I understand, it's about like learning the rules as you go as well. So a bit of a kind of the witness vibe or uh, understand those kinds of games. Um, <clears throat> so this uh, is edition 27 of out of a hundred. Um, we'll do this online. I think they're sold out currently. Um, but as far as I understand, they're doing uh, another run of these, so there will be more to get. Um, yeah, and to make sure this stays on screen and doesn't go off to the side or anything. Um, also, not sure how this will look when I'm like actually writing stuff down. I've got a pencil here. Like, will I be blocking the view? Who knows? We'll just have to see how it goes. Um, anyway, what is lock? Lock version 1.0. It's kind of hard to see a book with a version number in it. Um, yeah, first edition. So this is created by Blas Grasser. That's how you say your name. Uh, it's interesting to see a bunch of names that I'd expect to see in video game credits, but they're here in the uh, in this book. <laughs> I've got Stephen Lavelle, Patrick Trainer, Elliot Grant, a whole bunch of people. Um, yeah, a puzzle book by Blas Urban Grasser or whatever. Um, Locke are a fresh new kind of living beings that spawned in the middle of a vast, incomprehensible world. Help them understand their surroundings and guide them towards expansion of their civilization. This book consists of handcrafted puzzles to solve. Besides solving puzzles, you are also required to figure out most of the rules by yourself. You will need a pencil and an eraser. Pencil. There's an eraser on the end, it's probably terrible. Um, so hopefully I don't have to use it very much. This is like, I've had this, I haven't <laughs> used pencils in a long time. Um, so I'm also expecting to like rub on the side of my finger and it'll start hurting. But whatever, we'll deal with that. Um, also this pencil has just been in my drawer for literally probably like 14 years or something like that. <laughs> um, hopefully like rubbers still work, erasers, sorry. Um, <laughs> after that time they don't go off, right? Anyway, uh, where did I get to? You'll need a pencil and a razor. You can also cover the page with the transparent plastic sheet that's included. There is a plastic sheet here. Um, and draw on it with a dry erase marker. Download the book as a digital file on this link. So you can get it here if you would like to play it digitally or find the link to get the physical edition, but wait until there's new stock. Um, I guess I won't use this. I mean, it could come in useful for like note taking. So I'll see. Um, but I think for now I'll just like write with pencil and see how it goes. Okie dokie. Yeah, I'm kind of having to like, my camera's like in front of me. So I'm having to like reach around the side of it and avoid like knocking it or anything. So if I do knock it, I apologize. Uh, contents, chapter one through eight, and there's an expansion. Interesting. It does have the rules and the solutions at the end, but I think you're supposed to work out the rules yourself as you go. We shall see how that goes. Uh, I did try this um, like quite a while ago, uh, and I do not really remember what the rules were at all, so uh, hopefully it's fine. <laughs> like, it was probably a couple of years ago that I tried it, or maybe a year ago, but I, I don't remember. So anyway, wait, three, this is page, this is, this is three. Here we go, chapter one. One, the goal of each puzzle is to black out all the cells in the grid. Black out all cells in a grid. You do this by finding keywords and using their effects. Okay. Learn the first keyword, lock. If you find the word lock spelled out, you can black out its cells. L-O-K. 
If you do, you must use its effect. Lock makes you black out one additional unblacked cell anywhere in the grid. Solve your first puzzle. Okay, so, so you can black out the cells of LOK. It's going to shade them in like this. <laughs> Feels strange to start destroying <laughs> this physical thing that I've bought. There's only a hundred of, but no, I think that's, that's, that's the way I'd prefer to do it. Uh, and then that lets me fill in one extra one, so I can fill in that one. Okay, got it. Just gonna do it like that. It's a bit scruffy, but also I would I, I'd like to apologize. My penmanship is not particularly great. Uh, that's what happens when you don't write for a long time. I mean, it never was great to be honest. Keywords must be spelled out in a straight, horizontal, or vertical line by adjacent cells. So it has to be horizontal, vertical, not diagonal. By adjacent cells. The order of letters matters, L-O-K, but they can be spelled either forwards or backwards. Okay, so here we have it twice. Okay, yeah, it's tutorializing stuff. So we can shade in L-O-K, and that gives us an extra one to fill in. And then we'll shade in L-O-K. It's interesting, because at the end of this, I mean, I'm just going to be shading in all the squares, right? So, like, ultimately, there's no real... You won't be able to see my solve path in, like, in what I've done, I guess. Um, you can never black out a cell twice. Okay, so here's lock is written in multiple directions. Um, okay, so I want to use... It's, it's interesting. I want to use one of the locks to color in this K, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. Presumably I could use overlapping locks, maybe, um, but then I'd only get to fill in two others and I'd have one that was left over. So what I'm gonna do is do this lock that's going vertical here. And fill in the blank. Then use this lock that's going upwards here to fill in this K. Didn't say it had to be a blank space. The adjacency of cells can change throughout solving a puzzle. Figure out how. Oh, okay. The adjacency of cells can change. Is it a case of if I filled it in, I can jump over the filled in space? That looks quite likely given what's going on here. And these spaces. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is filling that one in and that will give me like this blank space then jumping through the the, the black goo that I'm leaving behind um, from L O K uh, and that'll give me one of these oh no okay so <laughs> okay so I have to actually fill in these two blank spaces first to bridge this gap I think I see how it's going to go. So I'm going to do the vertical lock here. And fill in one of these two. I'm then going to do the, this horizontal one here. And I believe the adjacency has changed. So this is the like figuring out the rules. In order for this to be solvable, I need to be able to make more locks here, right? Um, Cause there's a bunch of blanks to fill in. So, uh, it must be that adjacency changes by these being filled in or something like that. And it, this seems to make the most sense. So lock horizontally. Um, and then that lets me fill in another one. And then that means, assuming I, I can jump through the goo, uh, I can do lock here. And then fill in that final blank one there. Cool. Interesting six over here. Um, hopefully I haven't been covering everything up. I can't quite see, like I'm looking at the book when I'm solving them. Uh, I do have a view of like what the camera's seeing, uh, but I kind of have to look at, a, look at it separately. Hopefully it's all visible. So here, I mean, there's only one lock to begin with, right? It's going that way. So this is cool. So this way. Uh, 
Um, then presumably that unveils another lock somewhere. It doesn't. That was the only lock. I've got Alp or Clo. Huh. What? Lock. You can't loop round, presumably. Uh, here's somebody sawing something next door. Oh, it's time to stop this recording and jump to a different one. All right, back to it. And I've realized uh, the mistake I'm making is that once I've filled in lock, I can fill in an extra space. Uh, so uh, we're going to do this one here. I'm not sure if you can hear that soaring next door. Apologies if you can. Uh, but then that lets me do lock across here. There we go. Lock across here. And fill in that final O over on the left. Okay, <clears throat> and remember to do its operation. Okie dokie, so next up. Uh, so again, there's only one lock, right? So this is gonna be a case of figuring out which thing I need to shade in to be able to do another lock. And I can see it might be that K there. But there's definitely only one lock here, right? And I can, Cause I can't do like, I can't turn while I'm doing it. It has to be entirely horizontal or entirely vertical. <clears throat> so then lock. Now to get another one, yeah, like, oh, that's interesting actually. To get another one, another lock. Oh no, okay, so I could be filling that one in and doing lock that direction. That feels better, right? Because if I do, if I fill that K in and do lock up. In fact, how many L's do we have? One, two, three, four. So there's gonna be at most four locks and there are four blank spaces that need to be shaded in. Therefore, I'm only filling in blank spaces. It's gonna be this one. Yeah, very nice. I almost fell for the trap there. Um, so then I'm gonna be doing lock this way to fill in another blank space. It's a nice puzzle. Um, but it's gonna be one of these blank spaces up here. Does it matter which one? It's going to be one, one of these two, so I can eventually bridge this together, right? Yep. Uh, then we do this one to fill in the other part of that bridge. Then we've got that one to fill in that one. Lock. Fill in the final one over there. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting that my solve route is not going to be visible at all. Uh, ultimately, I'm just going to end up shading. I could just like shade it all in and be like, well, that is the answer. <laughs> um, okay. I feel like there was a page about tips that I might have skipped over. Like I remember opening it up before and seeing something about tips, but then maybe that's just like further in. Hmm, yeah, maybe that's further in. Okay. Oh yeah, solving tips coming up. Wait, okay, I just skipped over it. <laughs> All right, so next up. Oh, there's an eight actually, okay. <clears throat> it's puzzle eight. Lolock. So there's a bunch of locks here. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. Okay, I can see doing this horizontal horizontal one being more beneficial because um, I can then because then across that shaded in bit, I'd be able to make another lock. Whereas if I do vertical lock here, there's no lock across in this direction to have. So that means I'd never, I'd have to like shade all of these in as a result of doing some locks, but there are not that many locks. I think there's going to be three, right? In fact, I can just count how many there'll be. Yeah, there'll be three. Um, so I'm thinking that one horizontally to shade in one of these O's, and I guess it could be either O, that would be fine. Then the other one to shade in that O, and then the other one, should, yeah, okay, that's it. So lock 
horizontally to shade in one of these O's, lock vertically to shade in one of these O's, lock vertically to shade in this O. Cool. Very nice. Let's read these solving tips. You can color code or number code your solutions, marking each keyword and its effect with individual colors or subsequent numbers. This makes, the, make, this makes the solutions much more readable. Color code or number code your solutions. Oh, this is talking about how I can like show what I've done maybe. I mean, I've got the video. <laughs> I've got the benefit of having a video of how I solve things. Don't be discouraged to skip advanced puzzles. Showing the star. You can always come back to them later. If you're stuck or unsure, you can check the back of the book for explained rules and solutions. Okay, I saw that in the contents. Um, I quite like the idea of like having a little intro section and then the tips come up. It's quite, quite a nice way of structuring things. Um, <clears throat> Okay, chapter two, learn a new keyword, tlack. Sure, as with lock, if you find the word tlack spelled out, you can black out its cells. If you do, you must black out two additional unblacked cells in the grid that are adjacent to each other. Okay, adjacent, the same meaning as before probably, which is interesting. So find tlack. I can do two adjacent ones. So I can see how this is gonna work pretty immediately. Let's just fill in these, where it says slack, it's the only place where it says slack. Such an awkward word to say. That lets me fill in two adjacent ones. Obviously I could fill in these two, but then I wouldn't be able to fill in those two afterwards, so it has to be like these two. Then slack and fill in these two. Neat. Showing me that I need to, I can do it both horizontally and vertically, of course. But yeah, I can see how this adjacent rule is gonna mean that I'm gonna be splitting up the cells that I'm filling in. Also, we're gonna be mixing it with lock as well, aren't we? <clears throat> this could get complicated. In fact, lock is here. And there is a, th a slack as well. Ah, interesting. So I'm gonna to want to, um, like if I do that lock, I lose slack here. And it's very unlikely that I'd ever fill that in. So I think I want to do the slack and actually make lock out of this L and those that O and K. But that would require filling in three things here. Uh, I can only fill in two. Ooh, I see. Okay, so slack vertical, filling these two vertical, gives me another slack. Oh no, that's not good. Um, slack vertical, then the, like the L's gone. So it'd have to be this L that was involved. I'm only gonna get a lock there, right? But how would I fill these in when I can only do two adjacent things, right? If you do, you must black out two additional unblacked cells in the grid that are adjacent to each other. Slack, two adjacent ones, so it could either be like this, 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 this. If it's these two, oh, because then the adjacency changes, yes, of course. Exactly what I was just saying, and I immediately forgot about it. So, slack, um, fill those two in, get another slack here, which I can now fill in. Um, now these two are adjacent because adjacency goes through the, the black slime. I'm calling it black slime just because of the way these things are depicted. <laughs> they look kind of slimy. Um, 
And then we've got lock, which we can do this way. And fill in that final one up there. Cool. All right, this could get complicated. Um, I see a flag. I do not see anything else. I feel like there's a trap here in that it wants me to fill these two in, but that's going to be the wrong thing. There's definitely no lock or anything else here, right? No. Okay. So it's slack. <laughs> there's no other slacks. No, there's only one T. Okay. So it wants me to fill in two adjacent things. But if I do those two, then I have no other words I can make. So what I actually want to do is like do two that are across this block of slime that I've put in so that I've got lock, so it's those two. Lock twice. Now I've got lock here and lock there, I can fill all this in. Nice. This is cool. Very different to other stuff that I've done before. Oh, yeah, I had to fill it. Okay. Very cool. Okay, so next is number 12. Um, hmm. I see it's like, but with, a, with an O in the middle. I see a lock going up. I see two possible locks right now. There's a down one, a left one. The down one would, down one would make the T never useful. Because T is only part of Tlack right now. Um, and... Yeah, so the T is only part of Tlack. So therefore, if I use the L up, then I'm never writing Tlack. And that T would have to... I mean, it doesn't mean that's necessarily a problem. There might be a T that just gets filled in by a lock. I could see that being a puzzle at some point. Um, <clears throat> so, however, like right now that feels kind of bad. So if, if I did lock sideways here, I could fill in one thing. What would I think about filling in that one? Do another lock. Ooh, this could get complicated. This is getting complicated. If I do eventually get the tlack, which I would be able to do. So if I did this, lock, then fill that in, I'd be able to do a lock upwards. I'd then be able to fill another one in and fill those in. That feels right. I think I've done it all in my head. Lock, fill that in. Lock, fill um, something in, like maybe that K, because now I don't think I'll ever do that, yeah. Slack. Oh no, not that K. So lock, fill that in. Lock. Fill this in. Wait, how do I end up filling everything in here? So that would be that would be four cells. So I'm thinking it's lock, lock, slack, right? What does that mean? That means four, four, six, uh, 14. How many cells do I have? One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, I'm, I'm just miscounting somewhere. Lock, fill that in. Lock, fill that in. Slack, yeah, okay. And then there's just two to fill in there. <clears throat> and they can be done across the slime. So, uh, lock horizontal. Fill this in. Lock vertical. So I just need to leave two that are like adjacent. So I don't want to leave that one, <clears throat> right? Um, because that'll never be adjacent to anything else after I've done the slack. So that's going to get filled in. So then slack. <clears throat> uh, and then two adjacent ones, which are these two, even though they're clearly not adjacent. <laughs> Uh, all right, so number 13, we have a lock, we have a tlack, and that's all I can see right now. <clears throat> well, the tlack isn't, isn't available yet. I see a lack. I see another T over here, another potential tlack. I wonder if there's going to be something about exactly which order I want to do these two. 
<coughs> Apologies. Um, lock. So lock's the only one I can do at the beginning. So I might as well just do it, right? Yeah. It's not another one, right? No. And there's going to be another lock at the end, which is probably this one. And that's probably going to get filled in last. Maybe. So if I'm filling something in now, it's going to have to be this one or this one if I want another word to do, right? Okay, I see where this is going, maybe. I think I want it to be this one. <laughs> do I think that? So ultimately I want to fill in, like basically there's going to be like two tracks coming up. So there's going to be two adjacent pairs of cells that are going to be filled in. Um, if that's the case, and I ultimately want to fill in these three, I need to do something clever here, like fill in those two, then those two. That makes sense. So I think I want to do this one first, do this tlack to fill in those two, then this tlack to fill in those two. That's exactly it. Very nice. Um, so here. So that's my, that's the output from that lock. Then we're going to do a tlack this way, right to left, to fill in this and this which not only makes it so I can fill in the rest of this later, but also means I can just tack at the top, um, which gives me those two, and then lock horizontally. Obviously, because it's not digital, I can't, like, there's nothing telling me if I'm doing something wrong at any points. <laughs> so I just have to, like, check myself. Um, but maybe I'm doing it all wrong. <clears throat> Somebody in the comments will have to tell me. All right, how many until the next chapter? Well, a few. If you would ever have to perform a keyword effect, but for any reason couldn't, the puzzle isn't solved. <clears throat> of course, if you would ever have to perform a keyword effect, but for any reason couldn't, Right, so you can't just like fill in the cells of a word and then not do the effect. Right, I see what that's trying to tell me. Um, so presumably that will come up in this puzzle. So there are actually three tlacks right now and the lock. Whoa. Okay, because there's three tlacks, there's nowhere near enough other stuff to fill in. Um, and if I did two tlacks, that would cover up four things. So I could cover up a tlack with that, but... Um, interesting. I mean, I'm obviously not going to do it entirely with a lock, with, with you know, a lock and, well, okay, so how many locks and slacks do I need? How many things are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so there are 16. We've basically got fours and sixes, right? Fours and sixes. Um, four fours, uh, two sixes and a four. That feels most correct. So probably using lock and tlack to fill in one of the other, lock and two tlacks and the other tlack is getting filled in. So in fact, it's going to be that one, right? Because lock is only here. So uh, that would have to go horizontal. Um, then this tlack could never be made again. So, okay. So I am okay with this, but I might need to think ahead a little bit. So it's the start with the lock, I think. It might not matter too much what I do. These two are probably going to get filled in just like across the whole slime. So the lock. Um, and then fill in something somewhere. Does it have to be on the slack? I mean, it might as well be, right? Then there, yeah, I can see how this goes. So let's just fill in that A. And then we've got a slack here. I think I could do this in a few different orders and fill in these two. And then that slack to fill in those two. Yeah, that works. That works. That slack. My laptop um, fan is going wild. I'm not sure if that's audible. 
how much easier it is. Okay. 15. I see a lock across here. Luke, as it says. I see a lock across this way, potentially. This looks quite complicated. Are there any tlax right now? Or just this one lock? I think there's just the one lock. So that forces the first move. So I might as well just do that now and then think about it from that state. Okay, so what thing do I want to fill in? I could fill in that and have another lock, or I could fill in this or that and have a tlack. Interesting. So I'm clearly going to want to end with a lock across here, right? And probably fill in that space up at the top, maybe. Um, so, uh, how's this going to work? So I've got one thing to fill in. So ultimately four have been taken away. And how many do we have left after that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Two sixes and a... No, <laughs> 14. Uh, two fours and a six. Yeah. So two more locks and a tlack. That makes sense because I can only see one tlack in here. There's only one T. So there's going to be a lock that way. There's going to be a tlack that way. So this is just a case of, okay, do I reveal the tlack to me immediately? If I do that and then do tlack, well, I mean, what else is that L going to be part of? Nothing, right? So I better fill that in at some point. Well, or it could be part of the tlack. So let's say I filled that in and then we did tlack horizontal. Where would I go from there? Um, it's like horizontal. It's hard to keep it all in my head. I guess I'd fill in two. I'd fill in two, like, like two across. Uh, well, that's already done. No, that's, that's going to be done. So I do like, ooh, interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. So my, my problem is that if I, what's my problem? My problem is that I want to like fill in cells in here, but I can't cover up both of the O's. I need to leave an O behind. Um, but if I'm doing two adjacent ones, I'm going to cover up an O unless I do those two. So that might be what's happening. I'm doing slack filling in those two, lock filling in, it's like filling in those two. Lock filling in. That fills in one of the O's, but only one of the cell. How would I fill in this whole thing? Interesting. Um, lock, fill that in. Slack, fill in two. Those two, lock, fill in one. So that's not going to work. Now the two that I'm filling in have to be along here. To make this work, I'm going to need to fill in one, two, three, four. I'm going to get one from that lock. It's okay, so fill in this L, slack horizontal, fill in two horizontal like this from that slack, do lock to fill in another one. Oh no, but I can't cover the O. Ah, so I do those two across that lock. Interesting. But I haven't done that lock yet. So I do, I fill this L in to do this clack. I do this L now as a result of this lock, and then do the lock vertical. I don't do the slack yet to fill in that O. Uh, no, hold on, what am I saying? Did this lock fill that in? Uh, 
and and then right and then do the flag and then I can do that. Okay, I think this works. So lock. This is hard to visualize. Uh, L O K. Fill this one in. I believe. Then I have this lock, which I'm gonna do, but I don't want to fill in. Uh, I mean, I could fill in this. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Then select horizontal here to fill in two adjacent ones, which could be here or here. Oh, no, no, it has to be here because I have to be able to do the next lock. And then lock horizontally uh, and fill in this one. Hooray, number 15. And that wasn't an advanced one, but then I think we do have some advanced ones coming up. 16 and 17. Uh, let's save these for next time, maybe. Or maybe I'll end up skipping them if they're too difficult. Um, and then we go on to chapter three, which we'll see then. Okay, goodbye.